Yeah, just to introduce ourselves, I'm David Asprey and, and I'm doing a PhD at Newcastle on uh, historic landscape studies uh, using, using digital data. Um. And I'm Freya Horsfield, I'm doing a PhD at Durham um, studying the landscape associated with Revo Abbey using lots of digital techniques as well. Okay, so this is how we're going to do the talk today. What we're going to do is, we're opening the session today really by, by trying to put people back into to landscape studies and, and the ways in which they can sort of add their own skill sets to, to looking at landscapes and, and, and archaeology. So we know that digital skills are becoming more and more integral to archaeological approaches, you know, GIS, Access, uh, CAD, all, all these uh, applications that we, some of us use, some of us don't. But what we're flagging up is this International Adult Skills um, Survey through the OECD, a global survey, which has flagged up a few issues on the digital literacy of, of young people in particular. So we're going to try and use that survey data and just flag up ways in which maybe archaeology and landscape studies can be used and utilised to address this issue. And hopefully it'll all become clear. What we, what we want to do is mainly try and, try and provoke a bit of a discussion and debate about what, about what directions this might go in, if there's, if there's any mileage in it at all. So that's pretty much what we want to do. We're not here to belittle any current initiatives that are happening. We acknowledge and, and respect those. But it's just we're just putting it out there and seeing what people think of it, really. Um, okay. So to begin with, um, I'd like to um, flag up a couple of projects that are just getting underway. These coincidentally happen to originate partly in Durham, um, but there'll be some Newcastle and Accord Centre ones later. Um, the first, uh, the, the, these are both funded um, through the Cultural Protection Fund, which is a partnership between uh, the British Council and DCMS, and they're both about training. Um, archaeologists in, endanger, um, in endangered parts of the world in digital technologies. The first is called Training in Action and this focuses on, on Libya and uh, um, Tunisia um, and, and training professionals there in, in, in techniques which hopefully will go on to form a kind of replicable model for, for, for um, heritage professionals in those countries. Training them there in documentation, uh, techniques for sites, monument and object recording use of apps, um, 3D modelling, GIS and survey, including geophysics, preventative um, conservation and heritage management, all wrapped into this um, training package. The, the other project is the Training in Endangered Archaeology, which uses the IMENA database. Um, and this project's a consortium of three higher educational institutions, Oxford University, um, Leicester and Durham and working with the heritage professionals in, in six countries, Jordan, Palestine, uh, Palestinian occupied territories, Libya, Lebanon, um, uh, and Tunisia. And that's a, it's a three-year project to train up to 20 archaeologists in each of those countries, um, to a total of about 100, and um, they'll be having events in um, Amman, um, Tunis, and Beirut. And they'll be used, uh, they'll be trained in the use of open source area uh, recording methodology, which is designed for conflict zones and other areas where access to the ground is restricted. They'll be trained in the use of the IMENA database, which uses the Archer's um, um, underpinning technology, if you're familiar with that. Um, and the, the, the heritage professional will be trained in the acquisition and analysis of existing um, satellite data and air photo records, the use of GIS and digital records management. And this tra training packages will all be translated into <coughs> Arabic, Kurdish, and Farsi. Um, yep, there's uh, projects happening in, in the UK. I'm, we're going to talk about uh, Durham and Newcastle, and I'm going to uh, with the projects that run through those universities because we're up here, and, and you know, let's big it up. And uh, I'm, I'm bigging up the McCord Centre because Sam's here, and I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> so uh, yeah, the McCord Centre runs loads of fantastic landscape projects. A lot of most of them have got a digital. Um, skills and applications sort of, uh, focus. Uh, they focus on transdisciplinary approaches um, to try and build strategic partnerships, so looking across sectors. Uh, you've got, just to bring a couple up, there's things like the Hadrian's Wall, the fantastic acronym FREDI there, which is Frontiers of the Roman Empire Digital Humanities Initiative. 
and that's that's the it was obviously like, there's been a lidar survey of that uh, and so so a lot of these things are implemented in digital skills also you've got the, uh, the a lot of international projects um, there's a project in turkey um, looking at a, with a hrc approach to it as well um, from in durham there's the uh, exploring ancient identities in modern britain which uh, works in a in an international context uh, you've, they, they look to challenge divisions that currently separate the interests of stakeholders. So it's a similar sort of thing, trying to bring different sectors together through the use of, of maybe digital skills and other other applications as well. Uh, also, there's the Lindisfarne excavations, which, whilst bit, you know it's, it's a fantastic digging experience and everything, it, it's also crowdfunded. It publishes videos, live streams, virtual artifacts, and blogs. So it's got a digital element to that as well. <coughs> Is that right? So we just had a whistle-stop tour of some, um, some current and recent projects which have got roots in our parent um, universities, Durham and Newcastle. Um, the thing that's coming out of these is an increasing trend um, for, for this kind of work to be increasingly interdisciplinary and increasingly dependent on competence on the linked areas of big data, data science, um, statistics and sort of digital analysis. So a common requirement for these projects are multiple collaborators, and we haven't had time to mention them all here, but a substantial list, um, and approaches which use um, digital advanced technologies. And these are skills which the OECD um, terms um, PSTRE, which is Problem Solving in Technology Rich Environments. Now, th this, is, this is part of an OECD, it's an ongoing um, uh, survey of adult um, skills, the public, uh, the program for the international assessment of adult competencies, and it measures and benchmarks um, the key cognitive and workplace skills needed for individuals to participate in society and for economies to prosper. Um, so we're just going to take a look at the, um, the fir in detail in the first of the um, ways that were surveyed, which is this PSTRE, and the OECD defines this as the capacity to access, interpret, and analyze information found, transformed, and communicated in digital environments. And each of these were assessed on a level of one low and three high, and there was, it was possible to be lower than one as well. Yeah, this, don't worry about this slide too much because there's a lot of small writing on there. It's mainly just bringing up the, the criteria and what the point scoring sort of refers to. So you've got levels like you've got below one where, where participants really uh, they couldn't they couldn't really manage any any of the tasks that, that they were set, and then you've got one, levels one, two, and three. And I'm just going to bring up levels two and three. So level level two, uh, they might have to just to bring out a couple of bits here. They, they might have to make use of a novel online form. So you know it gives you an idea of what kind of thing. At level three, they might have to navigate across pages and applications, different. Uh, so maybe using different applications simultaneously, um, that gives you an idea of what of what they were, sort of, what the criteria was really. And the results, as I mentioned at the beginning, are, are a little bit stark really. What we f what they found was that 57.6 percent of 16 to 24 year olds surveyed in England and Northern Ireland are not proficient at levels two or three, uh, and. That's that's quite worrying. I mean, what, what we our own interpretation was that level three is probably inadequate for some some of the archaeological analysis that, that we undertake. So um, that gives you an idea of what of where the problem is, I suppose. Um, and I must admit, when I read this, I, I was sort of you know sort of quite downhearted, but but not over, overly sub, uh, surprised because if you you started to think about what digital competence is, what digital literacy is. It's compound, uh, and it's a complex compound. Um, this, I, I like this diagram, taken from a bit of work that, that Future Lab did, um, thinking about um, digital literacy across the, um, the curriculum. I think we'd like to emphasize a couple of points. Um, digital skills are a complex compound of, of competencies, and a lot of these competencies, if you start to look around the daisy, a lot of them map really, really well onto what is required through and developed, required for and developed through archaeology. Um, but acquiring these sort of competencies is challenging, um, and 
there was a bit of very, very useful bit of work done in the Netherlands called um, a project uh, paper published called Teaching um, uh, Digital Archaeology Digitally, and it found um, that everybody finds learning this stuff tough. Um, both what, what they call sort of digital natives, in other words, the youngsters, and the digital immigrants of my generation. Um, uh, both people found it, uh, bo both, both sets found it different, difficult for different reasons. Um, so if people don't leave school with these competencies, how are they supposed to acquire them? And the background um, to this is the changing sort of skills support landscape, the, um, the shrinking of, of, of the kind of, um, uh, sort of worker organised sectors of supporting uh, at local authority level and, and the WA shrinkage and, and all of that uh, disappearance of lifelong learning centres in England. Um, so that's all, that's all quite depressing. Um, so to ask the next question, hard-headed question, does having digital skills really pay off? I think yes, I think there's proof that it does. Um, and you can see the differential here between those who have no ICT experience at 47, this is an engagement in the, in, the, um, in the workforce. Those who have no ICT experience are disadvantaged, obviously, in some way, compared to people even with level two or three skills. Um, and and this, this did confirm that higher proficiency in solving problems using digital devices is associated with higher rates of participation in the labour force, and that's quite a, that's quite a strong message. One of the sound bites that the OECD um, put out there was that skills will only translate into better economic and social solutions if they're used effectively. So that's pretty obvious to, to most of us, I would have thought. You've got, to, you've got to be able to apply these skills to something practical and something useful. And we, we, we acknowledge that there's, you know, there's these multiple uh, initiatives which are all listed here. I don't need, to, no, I don't need to go through them particularly. But what we really want to to put out there is, 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 this, is this quite narrow? Can we do any more? Can, can we integrate what we, the problems that we've um, encountered in this survey? Can, can some of them be implemented through archaeological approaches? So we've had a very deliberately very, very brief presentation because really the, the point of today is to allow people to discuss this because they're not telling you anything you don't already know. Um, so we've, we hope we've illustrated that in combination, historic landscape study and digital technologies have the potential to dissolve borders in archaeology, unlock a range of opportunities within and beyond archaeology, and potentially engage a more diverse demographic. But realising this potential um, entails, entails an acknowledgement that geopolitical boundaries that we were talking about in the introductory session um, are not the sole borders facing our profession. Yeah, so how can we prevent an archaeological skills and practice divide, not just in the UK but also globally? That's the questions that we, we kind of want to put out there. And, you know, if there's no mileage in it, then fair enough. But we just want to see if these issues that we've raised can be placed into a context that archaeology and landscape studies um, can address. So how can the current initiatives be supplemented by this? Um, can digital archaeology uh, help address the digital exclusion? If, if so, how? Uh, can we use the digital skills agenda to secure resources which use archaeology to deliver PS, uh, PSTRE training? That, that's kind of looking at funding, really, you know, different pockets of funding that wouldn't normally be available to archaeological based projects. And what would it look like? What would a digital archaeology curriculum include? That's pretty much what we want to. Put out there, and and it's kind of over over to you, really. Um, so we'd appreciate any input that you've got. Thanks. Thanks for listening.